promising and under delivering. Marketing must under promise and over deliver. If your marketing makes you out to be this amazing business, you better deliver on every single part of it or you're going to annoy the heck out of people more. Because it's like, remember for many years, they don't get it today, but for many years, McDonald's was always ranked the number one service business in the world. And you go in and you go, and hang on, they don't do anything. I got to pick up my own tray at the end, throw my own trash away. Why does McDonald's get the number one service business in the world for many, many years? And it was simple. You knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. You didn't expect better than what you wanted. You knew what to expect. And so today, a customer coming to you, they need to be wowed. So make sure your marketing doesn't say every great thing. Do a couple of little things over and above that that make sure the customer gets it. If, you're gonna, if you say you'll deliver in three days, deliver in two, you know, and all those sorts of things. The best example of that I can give you is Zappos.com. My wife and I are probably in their top customer list because, A, I have uh, my wife and I have four daughters, me and my son. I'm pretty sure every shoe we own has been bought off Zappos.com. But my wife had a pair of shoes one time, running shoes, and the heel, the, the sole started coming off after like one month. And we run a lot, but not enough for the sole to come off after one month. She called Zappos and they said, oh, immediately we will dispatch that. We'll have a new pair to you tomorrow. Two hours later, there's a knock at the door. There's these two people that work for Zappos in uniform with a pair of shoes in her size, the exact ones that she wanted, in a box that is this beautiful wooden box with Zappos logo and their values on it, bright logo, blue of Zappos. Mrs. Sugars, we're really sorry your shoes fell apart. We thought you might want to go for a run today. Here are your new shoes to replace the old ones. Do you think my wife posted a photo of that on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? And she did a selfie with these two people going, oh my God, how amazing is Zappos? Yeah. You know, you, you've got to get the reviews, get the testimonials. And that brings me to negative reviews, Tony. If you get a negative review, reply to it online. Say, really sorry you had that experience. Love to help you out. How can we do that? I remember we got one on our website at Action Coach. And because one of our partners has had, uh, retired from the business to go and run for Congress. Now, this woman was the opposite party to him. So she wants to attack him. So she jumps on our thing and says, I don't know. Our marketing department writes back, I'm sorry we looked through all of our customer records. We couldn't find you as a customer of ours. We have no idea why you'd be complaining if you were never a customer. In fact, we looked up the business records and it shows you don't even own a business. So I'm really struggling as to how you can rate our business at one star when you don't own a business, you've never been our customer, and it just seems you're trying to make a political point on here. If you'd like to rate our business properly, that'd be fantastic. So when people read your one star, and they go, oh, look at this person. Why would they do that? You know, it, it, you got to, you're going to get some one stars, reply to them and, and be good about it. That, my friend, is the top 20 mistakes people make with a 21st bonus thrown in for everybody for good measure. I don't know what to say. I, I uh, can tell you absolutely there was dozens upon dozens of gems, tidbits of, of information that uh, I and my team will go through this. Now, this is for all of my customers, and I'm sure you should share this with yours. We will. But we're going to go through, through this, and every one of us, we're going to write down every single little idea. And I say little, you know, that might be a sentence or two, but they're big ideas. And uh, then focus on what are we doing that, that Brad has suggested we do, and what are we not doing? Uh, and, and, and what are we doing that Brad said we should do? We're doing it, but we're not doing it as well as he said we should be doing it. So uh, this, this is a, really a significant uh, uh, tool that we will use to upgrade all of our marketing and our business. And I, I mean, we really do some great marketing. We do a lot of what you said. But I have to tell you, there are probably several dozen gems that you, you mentioned that we just don't do the way we should be doing it or we don't do it at all. So you know, I really appreciate it. I, I know even from my businesses, Tony, there's a lot of, 
I make these mistakes too. Everyone's human in business, you know, the amount of time you have. But here's what I am going to do. Uh, I'm going to get my team, uh, Faith, who's behind my camera. Faith's always behind the camera for me. Faith is going to send you 10 copies of The Wealth Coach, Tony. Uh, 11, actually. One for yourself and 10 to give away to friends and colleagues of yours. And for everyone watching, I want you to buy The Wealth Coach, not for yourself, for your kids. Uh, I wrote this book. It, it, every adult should read this book, absolutely, because every adult needs to build a wealth plan and a wealth entity for their family. But give it to your kids. Uh, I wrote this book about two 16-year-old twins and how they became wealthy because I wanted everyone to learn the, the steps. Tony, you are an inspiration to many, especially to us here at Action Coach. We love having you as a partner in business. Thank you for today. It's been wonderful. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully soon. Thank you.